Hi, Steve White, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I just want to give you my predictions for the Super Bowl this weekend. Now, I think we're going to have a great game. You have two teams that are mirror images of each other in the same center coach. Both of them have great offenses. Both of them have opportunistic defenses. And they're both great on special teams. Now, when you have two teams that are so evenly matched, it usually comes down to little things. So let me give you my analysis, and then I'll give you my prediction. First, let's start with the most overhyped story of the week. The white friend is ankle. Look, the white friend is going to play on Sunday. Yes, I know it's a grade three sprain and all that, and it's been hyped all week. A grade three sprain means he's going to have to deal with swelling and pain. They can take care of both of that with the injection. So you look on Sunday, he'll be out there wrecking shop against the Saints. He might not be playing quite as good as he normally would, but he'll be out there. Now, a much bigger injury story, if you ask me, is the one of Gerard Powers. I mean, we got to see what happens when Powers doesn't play when the Colts played the Jets. Jacob Lacey got his ass torched all game by Braylon Edwards. And if you think that was bad, imagine what Marcus Colston can do to him. Yeah, I know. Scary. So, for me, I'm wondering if Gerard Powers is going to be ready to play. Now, I saw yesterday where he said he'll be ready to go by Sunday, but he wasn't able to practice. And even if he gets in the game, this guy's a rookie also. So, will he be able to move his feet? Will he still have his speed on the deep ball? That's something that's really worth paying attention to on Sunday because it may affect the outcome of the game. Now, I think people have been paying so much attention to Dwight Freeney's ankle because of a false narrative. It's really been pissing me off all week to hear on TV and on radio some pundits basically acting like they haven't seen the Colts play all year. They're still living in the past as if Ron Meeks is still the defense coordinator. Now, when Meeks was a coordinator, they rushed four, dropped seven, played Tampa two, and everything was great. Well, not quite great. You know, they got pushed around on the run. They weren't always able to get pressure, so sometimes they were picked apart in the Tampa 2. Now, Larry Coyier, on the other hand, he's come in, and now he's more of a Greg Williams type when you think about it. He sends all kind of blisters at quarterbacks. He sends Freeney inside, Mathis inside. Guys are coming from all over the field. And he's not afraid to have his defensive backs out there in man-to-man defense. But all week you acted... You've heard that the Colts are playing Tampa 2, and it's just not really the reality of what that team has done this year and what they're going to do on Sunday. So even with Freeney out, you can expect the Colts to send a lot of pressure out the breeze. They're just going to do it with a blitz. Now, here's the thing. Something you've heard all week also is that, you know, Peyton Manning only got sacked 10 or 12 or some other little bit ass number times all year. And that's great. But you know what? Drew Brees didn't get sacked a lot this year either. He only got sacked 20 times. So it's not like, even in a best case scenario, the Colts are going to get a whole lot of sacks on them this weekend. I mean, two weeks ago, against what I believe is the best defensive line in the whole NFL, they only had one sack and didn't sniff Drew Brees for most of the game. And I knew they would. Why? Because the Saints put such an emphasis on protection. So I don't really think that getting pressure or not getting pressure on Drew Brees is really going to be the make or break issue in this game. What will be is the back end because the Saints have weapons all over the field. I mean, every single position. They got Jeremy Shockey, a tight end, who's a mismatch most of the time. They got Colston. Uh, uh, they got Devery Henderson. They have Reggie Bush, Pierre Thomas. The list goes on and on. So, I mean, we're going to have to see how the Colts' secondary matches up, especially when they do blitz and you have guys in man-to-man coverage. Because Drew Brees will cut you up like nobody's business. He will tear you apart. Now, that's the matchup, the Colts' defense against the Saints' offense. Let's talk about the Colts' offense against the Saints' defense. The Saints' defense, like I said, is a mirror image of the Colts' defense. Except maybe they aren't as consistent, quite honestly, at this point in the game. But what they do is they go after the ball like nobody's business. Now, I called it before the Vikings game. We all know that Adrian Peterson has a fumbling problem. And the Saints exploited it. 
They went after the ball. They got it out. And really, when you want to get down to it, the turnovers are the reason why the Saints are in the Super Bowl and the Vikings aren't. So you have to look and say, what does that mean when they face the Colts? Well, the Colts, on the other hand, have an offense that doesn't really turn the ball over that much. Peyton doesn't really throw a lot of interceptions. The guys who catch the ball and run the ball don't really fumble it much. It'll be interesting to see which which group actually comes out on top in that matchup. I'm going to say the Colts probably won't be, be better on protecting the ball because they're cognizant of it. Their defense, the one they practice against every day, is always going after the ball, so they're used to having to protect it. And they've seen on film that the Vikings lost the game because of turnover. I also want to take the time out to address the, you know, the Greg Williams statement this week. You know, he's talking about hitting Peyton and uh, maybe taking a penalty and knocking him out of the game. Now, have I heard that before? I know I've heard that recently. Somebody else did the same kind of bullshit. Oh, yeah, Rex Ryan. Now, how did that turn out for him? Over 300 yards passing, three touchdowns. Yeah. Look, I know Greg Williams is trying to get his guys going and motivated, but Peyton Manning isn't the guy that I think you want to try to take those verbal shots at in the media. He doesn't respond well to them. I mean, he doesn't respond well at all. So if the Saints defense felt any pressure before the game, they're going to feel a lot of pressure now to try to live up to their hype. And, you know, I think people try to make these statements about Peyton because over the years he's gotten this false reputation, in my opinion, of having happy feet or being uncomfortable in the pocket. When the truth is, Peyton Manning moves his feet at all times before he throws the ball. I know I've seen him. He was my teammate in college all throughout his pro career. Nothing has changed. It's just that when he happens to throw an interception, then people focus on stuff like that. But you're not going to find anybody more steady in the pocket than Peyton Manning. He knows what's going on. He can feel the rush. He gets down. I mean, why take a hit if you don't have to? You know, I'm kind of like Ricky Waters on that one. For who? For what? So, in my opinion, I think the Colts offense is going to come out on top against the Saints defense. They're going to get in the end zone, just like I told you they would against the Jets. And the Saints are going to have a hard time slowing them down. 